Thank you for having me. And I'll uh, talk about Gemstack in real numbers. And uh, like my name is Artem and I work at Stepbit. Uh, we built uh, like product to build the Gemstack sites for uh, various uh, compositions between SSG and CMS and uh, allow users to like manage those sites via uh, UI because we have API like headless and sometimes it's painful. So that's what, what I do actually on my daily basis and also like participating at some open source initiatives and was involved in a web almanac in 2020 and uh, uh, we'll tell you a bit more about it. So web almanac is HTTP archive uh, report, uh, which is uh, like composing different parts uh, of, of the data related to the web. Uh, it defines uh, information about JavaScript, about uh, your uh, pages, about Gemstack, about CSS, a lot of different stuff. <clears throat> and it's really interesting. And uh, you sometimes amazed by the data uh, found there. So I'll talk about methodology so you understand what's going on and how it is done. So transparent. Uh, HTTP archive has 7.5 million websites. Uh, 6 million of them are mobile sites data and 5.5 million desktop websites. And these are based on Chrome user experience report. What I want to say is that only Chrome users are gathered, like information about only Chrome users are gathered from for this report. There is no Safari, Firefox, uh, or Edge, or any other browser. So that's what, what we have only Chrome users. Uh, besides that, we have only home pages of the sites. It's not like your uh, about page or login, whatever your product uh, does. Only home pages uh, are uh, like analyzed uh, on clean testing environment, which is kind of great because uh, we have uh, like experience of the new user visiting uh, different websites for the first time without without cache or any uh, any other things. And the uh, first thing uh, which we could not detect is API because it's uh, like really hard. Uh, our, we uh, users might have uh, Git based sites or they might have Contentful, Sanity, any other headless CMS which we could not define. And we unfortunately have no API data about Gemstack sites. And uh, we have 11T as static site generator. I assume um, you heard or use it, whatever, but we also cannot detect 11T as a technology used for the website. And it's by design. Uh, 11T folks tweeted about it. We were looking for for the data to understand uh, what the usage of 11T, but we could not. Uh, Next.js, uh, you might expect Next.js is also was abandoned, but no. Uh, what I can say is Next.js only used for as full scope of its uh, like variety because Next.js is not only static site generator, uh, but it has all kind of different suites under the hood to like do it uh, ser server side rendering or only client side applications, whatever. And we cannot like distinguish that. So what actually we have? We have uh, Gatsby, we have Nuxt, we have Hugo, Jekyll, and Next.js. And we have different CDN providers for static sites like uh, Netlify, uh, DigitalOcean, Azure. I'll show you more data about it. We have a full discussion on GitHub about methodology, which services we dropped, which we picked up, 
and why so you can um, like read about it if you're interested and uh, the end of the like like sum up of all the work we had uh, during that period of analyzing and writing uh, the stuff was the chapter in web almanac and about actual data so uh, we see uh, static site generators adoption for year over year like uh, 2019 and 2020 and it's doubled for mobile and desktop sites and it's really interesting like uh, technologies uh, like jamstack technology uh, jumped in uh, uh, twice f during one year, right? And uh, we see like 7.5 million websites and 1% and, uh, uh, of them are Gemstack sites. And it's really amazing. It's 2020, it, it's 2021. Uh, yeah, not 2020. <laughs> so uh, we expect to uh, this trend to be growing I'll talk uh, about future a bit later. And uh, well, what we see here uh, about Gemstack and WordPress and the trend of the WordPress, it's still uh, growing, but not uh, that uh, significantly as it grown before, we assume, but uh, SSG adoption is really, really uh, huge. Uh, we started uh, analyzing uh, everything I'll tell you a small story about it. So we started analyzing and we had SSGs only Jekyll, Hugo, Gatsby and Next. And we missed uh, one uh, huge player uh, here, sorry, uh, which is Next. Before that, Next.js was uh, like killing everybody because it, uh, it has uh, uh, vast majorities, but we remember that Next.js uh, including all its varieties. So it, uh, the di data is a bit spoiled, but we have Nuxt here, uh, which kind of uh, brings status quo to, uh, to the whole, whole information uh, about uh, static site generators. And uh, Gemstack year-on-year -year adoption about different SSGs. So we see uh, Next, uh, at the uh, at the top, Nuxt, Gatsby, Hugo, and Jekyll. Those two are uh, like uh, mastodons on uh, Gemstack, uh, and we see that they are not really uh, like growing. Uh, the, uh, if we compare with new and uh, not based static site generators, so data about is is really interesting about different uh, different parts, different sites. So we see uh, third-party bytes uh, which are used on uh, different SSGs. And we see uh, that uh, third parties really used uh, and uh, over three megabytes of third parties are used uh, for different SSGs, which is uh, pretty huge. And uh, we expect this number uh, lower uh, because a lot of effort is added uh, from uh, uh, folks from performance community. They pointing out uh, how important uh, reducing bundles, first user experience, first loading, etc., or web vitals, and all the things. But uh, we see that still uh, the the numbers are pretty big. And uh, image formats, uh, we see PNG uh, is uh, most popular used uh, format, but uh, we like uh, kind of expect uh, expect it to be uh, lower because WebP uh, should should have the uh, higher higher numbers, but PNG is uh, the thing uh, which is uh, having trend. We expect, I think that maybe like uh, it depends on, uh, on developers who's just starting exploring technology and build websites. And that's why uh, like PG has higher numbers. 
So what's about performance? And to be analyzed core web vitals for uh, for the data here, uh, like, uh, and uh, we see that uh, user compliance uh, is the next. Uh, so the next JS and Next uh, has better uh, better numbers, and uh, with Hugo and Jekyll we see higher. And we see uh, real co core web vitals for CDNs. I mentioned Netlify, AWS, Cloudflare, GitHub, Vercel, Akamai, and Azure. And about uh, which CDN is uh, used for which SSG is pretty uh, interesting thing. So I'll switch to another screen and show you this. Oh, it needs to be loaded. Okay, so I'll switch to another one. We have two different, uh, two different um, screens for the data. So this is a spreadsheet of extracted data uh, for different metrics like largest contentful pain uh, for uh, but distributed by SSG. So we see the Jekyll performs better. Uh, then next and next. Uh, and for uh, cumulatively out shift, uh, Jekyll and Hugo also perform better than not based CMSs. As I said, uh, so my, my hunch here might be that uh, those th three uh, SSGs are used uh, mostly by newcomers and sometimes they cannot apply latest techniques, performance, uh, uh, guidance or something else to make the, their sites like r really fast. That's uh, like a uh, place to improvement for these SSGs and for their documentations, I think. And about uh, CDNs, uh, we see, we can like see that the same trend goes, goes here on GitHub, uh, sites performing uh, like hosted sites on GitHub performing way better than on other services. But this really correlates with SSG, which is used here and what I wanted to show you. So we see that GitHub is uh, serving mostly Jekyll, Jekyll sites. I am sure you see it really good. This should be better. Uh, so. Uh, Jekyll sites are mo mo mostly based on GitHub be because uh, GitHub has built-in GitHub pages, uh, which are built with Jekyll on under the hood. Netlify is served mo uh, mostly Gatsby sites, and we see also this dependency. If we take a look at Netlify and uh, largest contentful paint here then it, it really cor correlates with, uh, with Gatsby, Gatsby results. The same with other, other metrics. Pretty interesting then at AWS serves Next.js and Gatsby. They're pretty close together. Cloudflare uh, is mostly used for Next sites and uh, Next.js. So that's like was uh, really interesting. And uh, we see Azure has a low uh, number of sites uh, together with Akamai and Vercel, but Vercel taking care of most of the next because it's related to their product. Yeah, that's, that's the data I wanted to, to show you. And about, uh, the Malmanac and uh, this, uh, all these spreadsheets, uh, you can find different uh, uh, interesting data like page weight and uh, 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 its uh, uh, pollution on uh, on the nature, like, right? Uh, so uh, on a variety of uh, mobile and desktop, uh, desktop data together with image formats, third-party bytes, 
or web vitals and others. And this year, uh, like in 2021, we will work more on the GEMSTEC chapter and uh, try to improve uh, the methodology of for detecting uh, those sites. And I think uh, we probably uh, might convince uh, folks uh, from uh, Next.js at least add some request header or some information we can analyze and uh, actually include uh, actual static site generated uh, Next.js sites. Uh, that will be at least my goal to push uh, this part forward. And uh, we had a lot of uh, contributors uh, and uh, the makers like Rick, Paul, uh, and uh, Barry who like uh, made this happen and the uh, whole uh, Gemstack uh, chapter makers. And uh, I really uh, like appreciate their help. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening. <clears throat> awesome, thanks so much, Artem. That was, that was awesome. Uh, I just wanna open up the floor to folks uh, who have questions. I have a few of my own, but uh, I figure I'll open up the floor to other folks first. So just feel free to unmute yourself and ask away. Well, this sometimes happens. Usually when someone starts asking questions first, other people build up the confidence to do it. So I have a couple. Um, so, so Artem, I was interested in the fact that um, the JavaScript uh, static site generators, um, they seem to have the, the worst performance, like you, you pointed out, than um, some of the, the traditional style ones. And now I think you were, you were um, you had a hypothesis that maybe newer folks were getting into the, the JavaScript one, so they weren't putting together like the best practices into this, those sites possibly, and that was skewing the results. Do you think any of that has to do with the fact that a lot of those applications are like hydrating to single page applications versus the Hugo and the Jekyll are just serving straight HTML without any kind of client side um, hydration process? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the problem we have uh, with, uh, uh, with Next.js because we cannot say that Next.js sites were built like uh, statically on on the server and just uh, just render it and then then hydrate it or, or something because we we see a layout shifts which is related mostly to images uh, like uh, when uh, content is jumping or, or something so I uh, all all my my uh, my things and my uh, thoughts related to that it's it's new they have a lot of documentation uh, on on the web. Uh, Gatsby and Next.js and Nox, they're uh, doing really good job in uh, like uh, describing how to build sites using those SSGs. And I assume a lot of newcomers uh, come on these uh, documentations and start building sites. So we, I expect that uh, numbers might get higher uh, when they point out more about performance and how to improve things uh, during during the time. But that's, that's, I think, as an, an experience thing, uh, which is require uh, some time for people to, to learn and uh, take care of. Great. Um, thank you. I had another quick question. So, um, so I noticed that you had like the 2019 to 2020 comparison charts and it looked like, you know, Jamstack in general had like, like a great like doubling year over year. And mm -hmm. then the next slide or a few slides down, um, you kind of looked at individual static site generators. And I think like four out of five of them, everything besides Next.js looked like it was losing some market share. The traditional ones like Jekyll and Hugo seem to be losing more maybe than the JavaScript, but even like Gatsby and Nux, I think were down slightly. So it are, I mean, how do you explain the, the gains in Jamstack in general? Is like Next making up for all those gains or like newer static site generators or like is, the, the ecosystem being more distributed amongst smaller players or or how do you kind of um, contextualize that? I, I, I really f looking forward to this year because it will show really what the trends are. Uh, if Gemstack grows and this is just growth in adoption versus 
for example, WordPress, because uh, I, I think uh, in community it was really big, uh, like big noise around it, uh, Jamstack with WordPress. So yeah, uh, we will see. I, I, I'm looking forward to to this chapter and to this data and uh, hope, hope to answer these questions. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you do any mid-year um, like evaluation of data or do we have to wait until the end of I, the year I, to... Honestly, I, I didn't do this on purpose because I didn't want to spoil uh, like 2021's uh, chapter mm -hmm. and uh, do some mid data. Gotcha. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, we uh, like everyone can jump. So uh, HDP Archive uh, has uh, monthly uh, updated data uh, months over the months. So we can grab uh, like data from uh, from the April and compare results. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I think, I mean, just like looking at the numbers kind of objectively, I, I feel like a lot of it depends on kind of the next few years because it, it, look, looking at the numbers that you showed, like obviously Jamstack's trend is is like a very steep curve, but the number, the absolute numbers are so small. So like WordPress and or the CMSs were flattening, but they still had like a 2% gain or something like that. And Jamstack had like a half a percent gain, but it looked really steep because the numbers are so small. So I'm curious, like, as that, that kind of goes, like what that curve is going to look like. Um, yeah, this was super yeah. fascinating. I really appreciate you coming on and talking. Um, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was really interesting, like data for me because one one percent. If you think about the technology, which was rarely new, and having one percent of the whole web, uh, at least if if even it's gathered from Chrome browsers, users, etc. But uh, it's it's really fascinating. It's so new technology, uh, like accommodating so fast. Does anyone else have any final questions? Yes. Yes, over there. Uh, uh, Tristan speaking. Uh, um, uh, first of all, uh, uh, thank you for all the data because it's uh, interesting to compare and you have a comparison with the generators and at the same time with the, um, with the pr uh, service providers. The CDNs, and I was uh, there was so many data, so I I cannot pick. I just pick one. It seems for me that Nuxt is uh, mostly deployed on Cloudflare. Is that, if I'm not mistaken, maybe. And I'm wondering if uh, the the um, the real user metrics would be better for Nuxt if they are deployed on Netlify. It seems that they are maybe better to pro, uh, to uh, send uh, uh, data. To, um, to websites. So I, I was wondering if uh, they would be, Nuxt project would be able to compensate, you know, maybe lower metrics by deploying to an Netlify, you know, changing the pro, uh, the CDNs maybe be better for those. Uh... Mm. I, I see, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, but Chrome, like HTTP archive doesn't like work with uh, different CDN providers or uh, different metrics. It works uh, like grabbing like from the user uh, like perspective. If you're using Chrome, uh, like uh, Chrome itself, you uh, using uh, you as a proxy to grab the data which is going uh, to uh, to you as a client and all uh, all the headers and all the stuff uh, stuff you get. Now I am not sure that getting uh, like next next into uh, netlify would uh, change the data on uh, usage but uh, it's really interesting that next was rarely deployed on netlify that was uh, really interesting and gatsby is mostly uh, hosted on netlify which is pretty pretty interesting i did have a question as well um, I know you talked about your work with the Web Almanac um, and talking about adding a Jamstack chapter to it. What is the reach of the Jamstack or of, of the Web Almanac? Like, what what do you think the impact of adding information about the Jamstack would be to the overall uh, development community? Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, well, it brings more interest uh, into Jamstack itself because uh, we show the numbers we can learn from them. Uh, for example, about image formats or third-party JavaScript, uh, we can write more how to uh, eliminate using third parties or how to squash them to uh, use less uh, unused bytes f 
for third parties or how to use uh, uh, next gen for image formats for gems tech sites and there, there is a lot of different information uh, a lot of folks from community can join write articles write their best practices to uh, help others to understand how to make gems tech sites better faster and uh, more more interesting nice thank you um, can, can anyone hear me? <clears throat> awesome. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I mean, just to sort of like uh, piggyback on what uh, Artem said, um, I don't know how many people are actually familiar with the Almanac. It, it's still a very young project. And it started really just out of, you know, you know, a group of people sort of like combing the HP archive constantly and just, you know, surfacing like bizarre data. You know, stuff that was obviously super interesting all around. Uh, some of it was surprising. Some of it was just kind of like, hey, let's see what the trends are. Uh, and so with, with the Jamstack being added, I think it's going to take a little while for really uh, for, for to see any kind of trends develop. Uh, I mean, the Jamstack in itself is a very sort of like uh, uh, a young uh, product, if you want to call it that, or art. Uh, uh, and <clears throat> I'm sorry. You know, I'm, I'm comparing it to like the early days of Apple and PCs. You know, PCs is WordPress, Apple is like, you know, the Jamstack. And it's gonna take a while for us to really kind of like unearth uh, the, the trends. But as our Tim said, say, for example, you know, what is the Jamstack chapter going to indicate on an image format level, knowing that in the last six to eight months, we've seen a lot of CMSs and frameworks uh, suddenly take the heavy lifting of format uh, management out of your hands. So that whole chapter could look totally different next year. Um, you know, and, and there are so many other things out of that that uh, that almanac that I think are, are really fascinating. Uh, you know, for those who may not know, there's an actually printed book coming out and it's like 600 pages, you know? So uh, there's a lot of data out there and, you know, it'll take a couple of years for us to really you know, to kind of figure out if there are trends, because we know that things can sort of change from one year to the other. And then suddenly, like what happened last year is totally not happening now. Uh, but it, it's also good to just kind of see where potential uh, um, improvements can be made. Uh, we can see where mistakes are being made sort of like on a regular basis and, and whatnot. So I just want to sort of add that. Great, thanks. <clears throat> Um, so th thanks again so much, Artem. I uh, really appreciate you, you coming on and talking with the group. Um, uh, Thank you for having and listening to me. I hope it was interesting for you. Yeah, I found it fascinating. 